Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a follow up to my last video really. Um, my last video if you haven't seen it, it's going to be linked down below. Um, but my last video involved me going over the top five things that I struggle with working in IT as a network engineer. Um, but this video is going to be kind of like a follow up to that and I'm going to be diving in deeper into one of the topics and that was number four on that list which was ISP issues. Now I said earlier on in that video that ISP issues really could have been number one for me and I'm sure a lot of you that watched the video, but I wanted to go over a little bit of some of the issues that I faced uh, and some of the personal stories that I've dealt with uh, dealing with ISPs. Now I will say this, we use at the organization I work for one ISP. Now I would like to build in redundancy and have multiple so that way I could solve some of those issues but in our case it's what we've got right so you know dealing with isps is one thing dealing with their customer support at the isp is a completely different thing so really you know a lot of times dealing with an isp you kind of work your way up right so you'll call in or you'll email in their technical support and you'll be like hey i've got a problem and i need help solving this problem and i think it's on your side right so you provide your logs or whatever and you usually get like this lower person right so you're sitting there on the phone with them and you're explaining everything you're like hey you know i've got a circuit issue um traffic's dropping you know whatever the case is and you kind of get this like stoned uh, to me it reminds me of like a stonewall face person that's probably just sitting there like uh i have no idea what this person's talking about like those lower tier people are mostly there just to document what's going on and then you kind of work your way up you'll get like a level two person or level three or you know you get into those is one thing but once you finally get to the person that's able to help you resolve the issue by then it's been days at least in my case man their support's pretty bad i have to say that so an example of that for us is someone previously that was employed by the company that worked in it um, made a decision that was not one that I would have made. Um, but what they ended up doing was, is they, um, for, for whatever reason, maybe they had a really good reason for this, but they opened up uh, RDP port and they had the service provider port forward it. So originally we had managed services with the company. Um, so meaning that our ISP managed our network as far as our edge to edge devices, right? So if we needed to make a change, you would submit a ticket to them. They would make that change for us. Um, again, this was before I was employed by the company and in the position that I'm in now. So I had no say in it, but once I found that out, I was quick to learn that it did not work for me. Um, and this is the story for that. Once I started working at the company and got into the position, my very first thing that I did was trying to get my bearings. I started looking at logs. I started looking at, you know, network equipment, server equipment, trying to figure out how everything was connected up, you know, going into a new company, you know, a lot of times all the roads are already built, right? So you have to figure out how everything's connected. And so as I was breaking down some of the components, I realized that one of our servers was receiving a load of traffic. And at the time, I think it was, I can't even remember what server or what server it was, but it was something you know, that shouldn't have been publicly available, of course, um, but especially over RDP. So um, the first thing I did was I screen capped that traffic and I sent it to the ISP and I said, hey, can you guys look into this? If I'm correct, it looks like that this port is allowed to the public. So I went and did a in-map scan on the, on the public IP and sure enough, it was exposed. So I gathered my side, I sent it to the ISP and I was like, Hey guys, uh, I really need this closed. And so it was probably like a three day turnaround before I heard anything back. And even once I heard something back from them, all they did was screen cap the firewall logs and send it back to me. They didn't close the port. They didn't do anything but screen cap the logs of the traffic that I had already found myself. Now what makes managed services a little interesting, at least at the time with this service provider, I couldn't touch the network equipment, right? I couldn't even see the network equipment. I could see it physically, but the interface I couldn't access. I couldn't SSH into the console, nothing. 
So it made it a little frustrating for me that I submitted this issue and then it took them three days to send me a screen cap back without still closing the port down. So I ended up calling back in. Of course, I was pretty furious with this decision and it didn't take very long uh, for them to fix it the second time around. But man, it was just something that seemed so humorous to me at the time. Um, I was panicked. I was like, I don't know how long this has been open. I could see, you know, invalid login attempts. I was like, somebody's gonna get in. But yeah, it was it was a terrible time. Another thing, and I kind of touched on it just from then, you know, with my previous example, and that's the time to resolve. You know, most ISPs have an SLA, but frankly, you know, those SLAs, at least in my case, are rarely met because you will go in and by the time you contact, you know, an ISP, this issue could be, you know, going on for days, right? So you could have an issue going on, you do your due diligence, you research, try and figure it out on your end. And when you finally collected enough info to blame the ISP, if you think it is, you get with them and it takes them forever to get back to you. Uh, and then when they get back with you, it's pointing fingers at each other, trying to say, oh, you know, <laughs> ISPs have this uh, assumption that they could never have a problem. They can never be uh, offline or not working, right? So, you know, the time to resolve for some ISPs are terrible. And that's definitely something, at least with our ISP, that I wish was better. Now, another thing I'd like to touch on uh, dealing with ISPs. Um, is another story that happened actually recently. Now, I'm not gonna name who our ISP is. Maybe uh, from some of the stuff that I've said, some of you might be able to pick up on who it is, but uh, out of respect uh, for uh, the engineers and sales, uh, you know, sales reps that I have uh, acquainted over the years. I'm not going to say anything about that because, I mean, at the end of the day, all ISPs aren't perfect. Um, but at least the relationships that I've built with this ISP is why I put up with them. Um, but one of the most recent issues that came up that was humorous to me. Um, now looking back on it was just a few days ago. In my last video, I kind of touched on uh, VPN connections and that's how our infrastructure is routed at the current moment. We're gonna be soon switching over to something different and the service provider is pretty much in charge of that, right? So they're gonna be setting up the, uh, the connections between the sites and uh, that's something that I can't touch. Um, but in order to do that, what I opted for was since we were going to be moving into a data center pretty soon, I wanted to route all of my traffic, you know, through the data center as far as it's going to be kind of a central hub and move that uh, workforce away from our headquarters. So I get to the data center on the day that it was scheduled for them to come and install the internet uh, connection there. So I get there and one of the techs come in and he goes, so this is a little odd. He was like, um, I'm here to set your internet connection up, but there's also an order to put an LTE backup. So essentially uh, what was happening was, is they were going to put an LTE backup service, which is through like a little cradle point. And essentially if your main circuit goes offline, it flips over to LTE, right? So at first I was like, you know, I, I knew about it previously, but it wasn't until like I really thought about it. I was like, this isn't going to work. So I told the, the tech, I was like, can we not install this? He was like, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. So he disappears, you know, uh, goes in. I mean, it was probably like two hours later. He comes back and he goes, so we've got a problem. You're paying for static IP addresses. And the only way that you can use those static IP addresses is if we hook up this LTE device because of the way they provisioned uh, the network, you know, their, their engineers provisioned it to pass through those static IPs through this LTE device, right? So he was like, yeah, so I have to put this in. And, you know, we, we have our rack space, you know, where we're gonna rack everything up. I was like, that's gonna cause problems for us in the long run with space. Um, but not to mention, you know, some of the other issues we'll face if it ever does fell over to the LTE. Um, because we were current, we we're going to be paying for like a synchronous circuit. So we're going to be getting, you know, a, a guaranteed bandwidth, uh, you know, synchronous. So I was like, man, um, let's, let's figure something out. So I sent the project manager an email and I asked him, I was like, Hey, can we just take this off the account? We'll add more services to the account, whatever it takes, just take it off. And he was like, yeah, that sounds fine. And so the tech disappears for a little bit and I'm sitting there waiting. It was probably like another hour. He comes back and goes, so we figured it out. We're going to be able to leave the LTE device out of your rack, but we're going to have to give you a temporary public IP address. So 
Not only was I not getting my static IPs, I was getting a temporary IP address that wasn't even going to last, right? So if I wanted to go ahead and set up, you know, my NAT policies or whatever, it would be kind of worthless because things were going to be changing soon. And I was like, okay, I, I mean, if I have to, I have to. So he disappears for a little bit. And shortly after he disappeared that last time, he ended up coming back and I was like, okay, you're ready to go. So I go to my rack and at that point I thought everything was, you know, going to be okay until I get an email back from the project manager telling me that there was going to be some issues. So essentially what ended up happening was is because they're going to have to rerun and restart the process all over, um, what we opted to do was do uh, more public IPs. Uh, so we're going to have a bigger subnet block. And at a turnaround of that, what's going to end up happening is, is they're putting in, apparently, from my understanding, they're putting in a request to get the original subnet block provisioned back to the devices. So they're going to put that request in. Then it has to go through the sales department to re-add more services to the account and take off the old service, which was the LTE backup, which is then going to provision a new set of IP addresses that's going to work their way through engineering again. So you can see where I'm going at. It's going to take uh, two service requests essentially for them to assign us an IP range that we're currently paid for just to turn around and provision a new IP range. So I kind of find that redundant, but you know, it's, it's something that I'm going to have to face, you know, ultimately. So I think as I was touching on some of those stories, some of you probably could have stories that would even blow mine out of the water. Um, you know, ISPs are something that we have to have. And as much as we would like for them to be perfect, that's not always going to be the case. Leave a comment down below some stories of you that you face dealing with ISPs. And as always, guys, I really appreciate each and every one of you for watching my channel and my videos. If you have anything, just reach out to me and I'll be sure to respond. Thanks. Bye.